Good evening, everyone. This is Deacon Up again, coming to you from Power and Unity Ministries. And uh, again, I say that if you give me a thumbs up, my daughter says, don't forget to tell them, give you a thumbs up, subscribe, or pass it on if it didn't encourage you today. The Lord has given us a word. I actually couldn't remember if I'd given this particular one to you today, but I'm sure I have it in its fullness. But he gave us a word and a warning and, a, and telling us what's about to come to pass. And I want to share that with you. And then I want to share a dream that my husband had that coincides with everything that's going on today and how we need to protect ourselves from the enemy. And that protection is pouring that oil that pours down over us through the Holy Spirit of the living God. So, and, and then uh, I'll end it with a matches it also. But let me just begin because this looks like it's going to be a little bit long today. Anyway, the Bible said, the, the Lord said to me this day, he says, there will be a major resetting of global powers. This will change to that suddenly and quickly. Suddenly, a shifting is going to take place. Do not be alarmed at what you see or heal or here because I am in the shifting. Now, I just want to reiterate what I reiterate all the time, and that is that God is in charge. This earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world that dwells therein. It all belongs to God. And we say within our human self, in our carnal nature, how can God allow all this to come do what it is that there is coming a time when he will say that's enough that's enough but he has it planned out from a to z as we said yesterday but not only that we have to we have to understand as we grow closer to god we do understand that his timetable is not our timetable i speak to the lord sometimes i say lord you know i'm 80 right <laughs> I still got things to fulfill that you give me that I can't do until you release the funds to do them. So I have to remember that his time is not mine. He lives in another time zone and he just allows us to, to come in and visit in that, in that place where he is, that heavenly place, that place of security and peace and joy that is surrounds him all the time. I wanted to get that straight uh, right, at, right at the beginning. There must, he says, um, do not be alarmed at what you see or hear for I am in the shifting. I saw a vision one day where everything looked like chaos, chaos, chaos in this direction, that in direction is coming from everywhere. But all of a sudden, I could see a rumbling. There's like, like I could see, I don't know, say like you're behind a stage, I guess, and you're fixing props and stuff and you bump the mirror, the, the uh, um, curtains along the way and they, they begin to move. Like I could see this under the ground and he says, I am behind the scenes and I am always working for you and your favor. Because all things that he thinks is good and holy towards us. I am covering you with my mantle. He says he is covering us with his mantle. Soon and very soon, the powers that are now will no longer be. There, there, will, there will be devastating events, but do not be alarmed. There must be a cleansing for the shifting to take place. We are looking for at a spiritual thing that is about to come to pass and change things in the natural. Remember my word is sure. Remember Noah in my time, he built the ark. I, I was his safety. Remember Moses, when all seemed lost, I opened up the sea and they went across. Not only across, but on dry land. Remember how I fed them, protected them in the wilderness. 
I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Stand sure-footed in me as great change is coming. He told us that yesterday in another way. That he seems to repeat himself often, but in a different way. Because sometimes we have people hearing it in that, that doesn't understand this way, so God gives it this way. And it's the same when he calls you into ministry. Um, the people I reach, you can't. The people you reach, I can't. He gives us all those special things to reach a harvest for him. You understand what I'm saying? Remember how I fed them through the wilderness. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Stand sure-footed in me. An attack is planned for Israel and for America. But with one blow of my breath, I will blow the enemy's plans to naught. In the midst of darkness, I come with blessings. I will bless those who love me and protect them with my peace. No one in troubled times can give you peace and rest except Jesus. Your friends can gather around you, your family. They can try to say things to soothe you, but only Jesus in his presence. Can you find that peace and rest? War, always in the Middle East, is real, but is diversified. Be watchful, America. Be careful. Do not be deceived. Be prayerful, church. Call forth the intercessors. Beware, a storm is coming. But fear not, I am in the midst of the storm. We don't see, I understand that a lot of times, but there has to be a cleansing. There has to be a cleansing. You know, when we, we, we say like we burn something in a pot and, and we take a, a, a steel wool or something and we scrub and we scrub and we scrub and then we rinse it out and we still see that there's more dirt there. So we get down and we scrub, 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 scrub again until that plate is clean. That pot is totally clean. And that sometimes is what Jesus has to do. He doesn't want to see any parish, but some are so stubborn that they they. You have to do something drastic to bring them in, to give them that insight that there is another way. Praise God. Look to me for protection and peace. Be watchful, America. Be careful. Do not be deceived. Be prayer, church, and call in the intercessors. A storm is coming, but fear not. I'm in the midst of the storm, and I have already defeated your enemy and mine already defeated. If we can just grasp that in the spirit, he has already won every battle the enemy can send your way. It's trusting him, living in him, refusing to stay out of his presence, but clinging to him and asking for his presence every day. Listen to this. In a in time for it is time for America to put away their greed, lust, power, and infidelity to the only and, and bow to the only true and living God. When you kneel and repent, I will come and I will restore and cleanse. It's when you bow your knee and repent, He will restore and cleanse. That's that's two. Bow your knee, repent. Now he says, number three is worship me and you will see my glory. He gives, a, he gives a blessing right behind what he asks of you. Honor me and I will rescue you. That's number four. Number five, praise me and we will dance and sing together. I am the God that heals thee. Number six, I am the one who loves you. 
Number seven, I comfort you and I take you through the storms of life. I am the one, if you will trust me now, hold to my unchanging hand and you will see greater things as I pour out my treasures from heaven upon the earth and you will all and upon the earth but always be aware that the enemy is going to come and try to steal your your gifts in other words the gifts that God is about to pour on us has a tendency to cause us to go out into the world, to possess this, to do that, to do things we've never been able to do before and grasp those things and pull us away from the presence of God. So he says, beware the enemy's coming in to steal. I am Alpha and Omega, the Almighty God. Come into my presence where there is fullness of joy, peace, and love everlasting. See, he's telling us, he's just exactly what I said. If I just keep reading, I wouldn't have to have lived so much, would I? <laughs> he said, I am. When the devil comes to try, I get pour out these gifts and these blessings and treasures from heaven and in from the earth, they will come up. And you will understand and you will have more knowledge and, and understanding of how to use these gifts, these treasures that I'm going to pull up from the earth and send down from heaven. He said, but beware, the enemy's going to try to steal. But he says, I am Alpha and Omega. I am God. Come into my presence for there is fullness of joy, love, peace everlasting. I am your sword and your shield in the time of war. In the storm, I am your peace. Lean on me today and I will show you the way. Keep your eyes upon me and you will see the glory of God fall upon this generation as none has seen before. As the battles in heaven come closer to the earth, keep your eyes focused on me. You understand the enemy is in the air also. My Lord and my God, my Lord and my God, but keep your eyes focused on me because it's coming closer to the earth. Remember what I have shown you. I am your safety. I am your rock and the battle is mine and I will fight for you. How much plainer can he make who he is, how he will protect you. But the key is staying close to him worshiping and praising him put on your <laughs> what did i just say if i just be quiet it just keeps he says it put on your garment of praise and worship the weapons of warfare that i have chosen and watch me work put on your garment of praise and worship in the time of warfare and watch me work Gather together around you that suit of armor and pray in the spirit. Brush off the dust from your feet. My grace will cover you during the battle. Great faith will be released. Miracles of old will be reborn for all to see. What a message! What promises, what revelation he's bringing back to the body of Christ. I've not changed. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the enemy has come in and tried to lull you to sleep however he could. It doesn't matter to him, however he can. Fear is one of his main things to use against people. And he says, right, <laughs> praise God, do not fear because of the things that I have revealed to you today, things that are coming, things that are in our world today, things that are happening as I speak. My warnings are love letters to you. Do not be afraid of what the carnal eye sees. I have given you the escape route and that is in me. All things must happen in their appointed time and season. I, the Lord, have spoken it today. 
Now, the reason I say that is because this is what we, we have to understand. God's time line is different than ours. We wish it wasn't, but it is. He's a God of every time, every space, every dimension, every galaxy. The creator of all, that is who we serve. Now I want to pass on a dream. It's going to sound a little bit odd, but this dream is very important for us to understand who we are in Christ. We are to subdue our enemy. Bottom line. Bottom line. This was a little strange dream, but uh, a friend of ours named Anne, she interpreted this for my husband. This was his dream, and he was telling me, he says, I began to see alligators everywhere, large ones, small ones. They were coming every size, and they were trying to eat the people who were running to and fro trying to escape. Then someone, a man, developed a green slime which sprayed on the gator's and when it, they sprayed on the gators, the gators couldn't do anything. But when the gators would slip back into the water, it would wash off and they would come out again to pursue the people again. Again, the green slime would be, slime would be sprayed on them. Again, the alligators would begin to lick it off this time and each one. And it would continue there pursuing and devour the people. And then he awoke and he says, I know this is not a demonic dream. This has got to be something from you because I asked you for protection. Now listen to the interpretation. If you haven't already gotten it, you may be blessed with that gift. The gators naturally are the enemy. They're demons sent to attack the people everywhere. The slime in the dream represents the Holy Spirit. You say slime, the Holy Spirit. I said the same thing. When you think about slime, how it works, and in reality, its potential, it's slimy, it's slippery like oil. What does the Holy Spirit represent? It's represented in oil, not just water, but oil, oil, where it rubs on and, it, and, and it's hard to get off, right? And it's hard to wash off, but it can be washed off if, if you have enough of the world start to come in. Also, slime was made by man. If you listen to what it said up here, uh, someone, a man, developed a slime. It, can, it represented something that man did, and man cannot give total protection. No way. That sounds contrary that man, uh, that this was made by man and not God, but only God can give you a total and unconditional protection from of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit can be washed off if we allow so much of the world to come in. That's the slumbering and the sleeping of the people in the church. You know, God speaks of the seven different churches in Revelation. And that is, and uh, the, they grow cold and they grow indifferent. And, and that's how come fear can come, come over them so easily. But he's, it, well, it says right here, Christians can be caught up in worldly things and can be drawn away from the Holy Spirit's teaching, his comfort, and his revelation. That oil can be, can be washed off and they have to come back and repent as, it, as he said in his word. And what he would do, he's always without stretched arms, always without stretched arms. I have given you the weapons to use during this season, is what he said. This coincides with exactly what he said in the word that he gave me to give you to start with. The weapons to, to bring you back to that beautiful, perfect closeness to God. Pick it up, wrap it around your loins, put it in your heart, Eat it like a book and rejoice for truly blessings are coming from heaven's portals as we listen and obey. Wrap that word around you. Wrap that, that, that love and that the presence of God, the presence of God. The Christ that we serve is the most powerful thing that we can have in our life, his power. 
We are to take dominion over demons. We are to take dominion over everything that is negative in our life. My mother used to have a saying. She said, if you say one negative thing, you better come up with two positive. Because you've got to erase it with one and come up with some that's uplifting. She always said that if you if she ever heard anything negative. All right, give me two positives now. That's what she would say. We are to subdue them by the power of Jesus' name. This is a command for us to use the weapons that destroy the enemy's ploys. The Lord is showing us his weapon of choice is praise and worship. How many times have we talked about that in our videos? Those two things, praising him, worshiping him, brings his presence. And in his presence is fullness of joy. And it seems like everything that is negative, every situation, every um, whatever calamity has come into our heart just seems to disappear. He seems to have the answer to it all. It doesn't matter when you're in his presence because he is the answer to it all. Praise God. God. The answer is praising and worshiping him, one of the greatest weapons that is. Um, in Genesis, Adam was told to subdue. In Genesis also, Noah, when he came out of the flood, he they was told to subdue everything. Subdue it all. Subdue it all. Have dominion over it. Take control. Take control. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they, rel they relinquished their control. But when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, I believe that first drop that hit the ground began to purify the earth again. That's why we have such battles. But, that, but the Lord said, the Lord, the earth is mine and the fullness thereof. He did not give it away, but he restored it. He said, I will reverse the curse. And he did so on the cross. We are to subdue and take dominion over the enemy through our praise and our worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <sighs> praise God. Glory be to the Lord. There is so much I want to say, but I think I'm going to cut this a little bit short. There's a revelation that the Lord gave me a long time ago about the uh, tabernacle. The outer court was where we first laid our sacrifice upon the altar, which was ourself. We committed ourself. The inner court was where we moved closer to God. And the Holy of Holies is where only the priests could go ministering to the Lord for the people. That's who we are today because we don't have to stand on the outside. We can have the Holy Spirit inside. That is what's so awesome. But he also showed me in that same vision, he showed me that there's a place beyond the Holy of Holies. And that place is is to get in his divine presence, his divine presence, where his glory just fills the room and disperses all gloom and doom. This place is not a place where everybody can go, but it is a place when you're hungry and you're thirsty, when you can find that place in him. You know, I used to do a funny thing. I know it sounds funny to a lot of people. And I know the scripture didn't mean that you have to literally get in, a, when you pray, get in a closet. You know, don't be as the Pharisees and stand in the corners with loud, long faces because you're fasting and say these loud prayers to everybody. But he says, get alone with me. Get into a closet. And I used to literally get into a closet. Because I was trying to let God, I mean business. I'm not satisfied with just being saved. I want the fullness of God. And I won't be satisfied with anything else. I am 80 years old. I was saved at the age of 18. And today, I still have that craving 
to get closer to him, to know him in a greater way than ever before. It never leaves. It never leaves. Praise his name. I'm skipping over some of this stuff I was going to say because the time is getting on. He says, I am. It doesn't matter when you get in that place, that special place beyond the holy of holies. It doesn't matter what troubles you had, circumstances, situations, problems, fear, it all disappears. That is when you realize that he is in control. He is your provider, your healer, your defender, your sword, your shield. His love never fails. Heaven is his space and earth is his footstool. He is Alpha, Omega, first and last beginning and end, the creator of all. He is the great I am. And he is big enough to create the universes, the galaxies, time, space, dominion. Yet he's small enough to fit into the heart of man because he breathes his breath into Adam first man and made him a living soul that place i don't know I, I know that everybody everybody that's ever been born feels there's this there's this little place in your heart that can't be filled you, you go for this and you go for that you do this you do that you you search for things in all the wrong places when only jesus can fill that spot in your heart cuz he left it that way he left that little space for him, and him alone can fill. And boy, when he fills it, oh my goodness, the joy bells of heaven begin to ring. <laughs> the Bible does say that when one soul repents, all of heaven rejoices. Praise be unto God. Praise be unto God. I think I'm going to end this here. Oh, this is a good point. This is a good point. We can do nothing without him, but in and through him, we can do all things. That's in Philippians uh, 4 and 8, I think it is. Praise be unto God. When we hunger and thirst for his presence, he will come. He will come with blessings and answers to our questions. He will come with power and with glory. He gave us his mind and picks us up and sets us in high places with him. Even now that we're here, even now that we're still on earth, he says we can sit with him in heavenly places. That's the presence that we seek. It's so important, people, that we get in, especially during troubled times, especially during times when we don't know which way to turn. Not get in a, in a fetal position and start weeping and moaning and groaning, but a time to get in his presence and begin to worship and begin to praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. Another emphasis. It's not so much on our ability to achieve things and pass through difficult times, but it is our, our uh, willingness to allow Christ power to sustain us in the difficult and scary times of life, believing that he will protect and defend us through whatever situation we face. That's what happens when you get in his presence. That fierceness, that lion part of Christ comes out in you. And you realize who it is that protects you. I am your rock and your shield and your fortress. I am your hiding place. How many times has he told us that? We need to understand. He's not just the healer of the body, 
but he's the healer of the soul and the and the spirit. And let me tell you something. The spirit healing of the body a lot of times so many afflictions come in the body i'm aware of this just something i went through here just this past two weeks and i know it started here listening listening to negative stuff and it affected my body it affected my body but god came on the scene because i realized that what affects me here affects me in my body. That's why God says, think on pure and holy and righteous and, and glorious things, things of good report and good virtue, not to dwell on things that are negative and things that hurt you. He is the healer of the body, the soul, and the spirit. He heals, delivers, ignites, restores, and revives. There is nothing that we will not do for his people. If we will seek it, we will find it. If we knock, he will open it up. If we ask, he will answer. We cannot be separated from his awesome love. No matter how deep we go, no matter how in desperation and despair we sink, his love is always there. We just need to see it. And the way we see it is to begin to worship and to praise him. That's how we see it. Praise his holy name. So much I want to say, and I know I'm gone over, and I just I just briefed over as part of what he was trying to get us to understand. Wake up, smell the coffee burning, get in the presence of God, revive yourself in Jesus, kindle those embers into a flame burning brightly, put more oil in your lamps. That's what he keeps saying to us over and over again. I want to read this quickly and then I'll have to end my session. Many will not believe the things that are coming about, how the sea will change its route. My footsteps will leave, no doubt. Is there anything too hard for me? I flung the stars in space, created from dust the whole human race. Breathed in them life I gave from the cradle to the grave. The body to dust, the spirit to me, the soul to live eternally a choice must be made before the grave the world or life in me before the last breath you breathe things are changing oh so fast all i have spoken will come to pass stand firm those who are mine we will soon wine and dine <laughs> as we work as a team remember all is not what it seems Stay focused on the bright and morning star, for all are not who you think they are, but all have come your dreams to mar. But some have come your dreams to mar. Be wise and discerning and stop murmuring. Rise up and be strong. Start singing a new song. As I write all that is wrong, he is going to do it. Standing firm on the solid rock, you will see me turn things around. Standing firm on solid ground, you will see me turn things around. You are the reason I came and died. My blood washes away all sin and ties. Bringing peace and joy within, breaking all the chains of sin. You are now my hands and feet. Marching forward with no retreat, bringing souls to the cross where no one to and fro, where no longer to and fro they're tossed. Seeing the devil's ploys and screams, they now are part of Christ's redeemed team. No longer walking in fear, but picking up their father's gear, protected from head to toe across this land, we now go. A praise in their hearts as on this new journey they start. 
a glow on their face as they sing Amazing Grace. Is this what it's all about? Praising Jesus with a shout? Glory to our Lord and King, Master of our soul and Creator of everything. Oh, precious people of God, those that are out there searching, this is for you because God is telling you what's going to happen. Prepare yourself. Put on the armor of God from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way back to God the Father. I died for you. I was crucified for you. I didn't have to. I could have called 12 legions of angels. But I chose to because I love you. So I don't care where you are today, what you've been through. Seek his face and his presence. It will bring you joy unspeakable. It will set your heart aflame and on fire. And he will meet your heart's desire. I better go. I could just keep on going. But I love you and God loves you so much more.